What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and it is time for Real Talk Wednesday. So before I even get this video started for today, in case you guys are wondering about the hair, I actually wore this here quite a lot. Um, I did feature it in a couple of my Real Talks as well as just like regular videos, but I did do a review on it. This is by Rosa Beauty's Hair from AliExpress and this hair is just like a beautiful i do wear it like this because you guys hear me complain a lot that it is really hot out here in the summertime so in arizona so i really try to stay cool i like to look fabulous with the hair but i really do need to stay cool so i do keep it braided like this i did do a video on how i get it like this with the part here and so forth to make it look natural so if you guys want to see that video i can edit it just leave a comment below and i'll post that but yeah hair is awesome as well as for the necklace that I'm actually rocking, this is from Beads to Us, and I will post this information below. This is like four bucks. They have like loads of bags, jewelry, beading jewelry, so you can make jewelry, jewelry already made for like the low, low, cheap, cheap. So when you see things like this on other websites, they're like 30, 40 bucks. You can actually get those same statement pieces from Beads to Us, and I will post it below for you guys. I have like a huge um haul that I did a cheapskate haul on my channel, and I'll also post that video, guys for you guys below so you can see what everything looks like and in that video I actually did place each piece on me so you can see exactly how the necklace would fall and look on an actual person versus it just on a piece of paper or me showing it now for the dark vampy lips because I know it's summertime but I wanted to try out this new makeup that I received from black up cosmetics and I absolutely love it. They sent me two lipsticks amongst a bunch of other stuff they sent me. But they did send me um, two lipsticks. They sent me a bunch of eyeshadows, facial products, eyebrow stuff. Just absolutely great stuff. So this is Black Up Cosmetics. And this is a cosmetic line for women of color. So I was really, really happy to get these items because I have to mix my foundation a lot together to get like the perfect complexion match. So they did send me some foundation. I will be trying that out as well as doing a review and a tutorial on those items. But yeah, so they will be featured in the United States now. Um, their package is, is black and sleek, just like MAC, MAC Cosmetics. And they don't have names on their products. So they're just basically um, numbers, black up. And this is number 10. And this is their Rouge à la Vers. I think that's how you would say it in France. Because this is like a Paris cosmetic line. But yeah, Black Ups Cosmetics. I also have that on my lips, which is that dark brown. This stuff right here, I am like over head over heels for by them. This is their Sublime Powder. Sublime, Sublime, Sublime Powder. Oh my God, this Sublime Powder is like to die for. So the color of this or the number product item is NPS01. OMG, I love it. This is like the best highlighting color I've ever seen. And it's actually going to be my new favorite because I was about to go back to MAC and get my Gold Trace blush, which I've been using for years as a highlight. And I have like hardly, n I don't have anything left. I don't even know why I have the blush still. But um, I keep it as a reminder to say, hey April, go and get it. Because the last time I was there, they was fresh out and now I'm fresh out. So this is like the best color in the world. Like seriously, this is like, this just takes my gold trace or trace of gold by MAC um, like over the top. This is like, oh God, so freaking pretty. I hope you guys can see it, but it's like gorgeous. Like, oh my God, I love this. I love this. The packaging is really pretty, but this color is like takes the cake of my other blush. So, and I use it as a highlighter, so I won't be going back. I might go back, but I'm not in no, any rush right now. And the blush that they sent me, so, is color NBL05, which I have one today. I have another blush by them, uh, quite a few eyeshadows, and a bunch of eyebrow stuff, pencils, lip colors, lip balms, lip pencils. They have like, a really great line, so I will be doing a video on that soon. But this is more or less like a peachy, very, very light, shimmery color, which is absolutely beautiful as well. The colors are so pretty and just like really, really well pigmented, so I'm really super duper happy about that um you know just when you thought your makeup collection was done you got more stuff in the mail so i actually had to add a new add-on to my collection just so i can have some place to store my stuff my bf meaning my boyfriend my boo he thinks that i have enough makeup um i had to tell him to mind his business about that because that is none of his concern i said it makes me happy so you know 
So anyway, yes, let's get into this real talk. If you guys want a real talk featured about your situation, your life, advice, you need something, go ahead and send me an email at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com and put in the subject line real talk and I will get back to you in a timely manner. Please know ahead of time that there are others that have been waiting before you prior to your email, so just keep that in mind when sending me something. If it is super duper urgent, if I have not gotten to your email that you've already put, please re-email me and put urgent or important, something of that nature, so I could hurry up and get to it because I really don't like to have people waiting. So let's get into this video. So hopefully my phone does not die during this video because it is on yellow and yes. Ooh. So let's get on to the one. This is a lengthy one and I'm going to be doing three, okay? Hi April, I hope all is well. I just wanted to tell you, you be slaying, laugh out loud, and you are seriously my friend in my head and I really admire you. Well, thank you so much, Diva. So to get, get to the real talk, I'm going to forewarn you that this might be a little lengthy and I'm going to go ahead and change the names. And so I appreciate that if you guys want to change the names beforehand, then that's good. So my name is Cody and my BF boyfriend's name is Quincy. And we have been together off and on for about a year or a year and a half now. I met him in high school six years ago. I'm currently 22 and we were good friends since then. He was someone I confided in about guys I was dating and somehow down the road we decided to give our relationship a try because we already had such a solid friendship. So between, so between the time we graduated and the time we linked back up, we both had children by different people. My daughter is 16 months and his daughter is about two. So when we decided being together would, a, would be a good idea, he was having issues with his child's mom by not communicating well and a bunch of other shit that had nothing to do with me. My child's father is not in the picture so there was no drama on my side but I had a soft spot in my heart for my boyfriend because he was actually trying to be involved in his daughter's life. Going to see her every day, he was buying her stuff but apparently the child's mother Sarah would either decline the gifts or throw the things away that he bought. So anyway I had an issue because my boyfriend and I were talking one night and I asked does Sarah know we're together? He said he didn't want her to know because she would feel like he was playing daddy to my child and she would more than likely keep their daughter away from him out of spite. So that was a red flag to me, number one. I decided to keep an eye on the situation. Another situation transpired where they took the child to the aquarium, but Quincy lied to me about Sarah going with them. I was, so, I was more so pissed that he lied versus the aquarium thing. He ended up telling me the truth a few days later and said he kept it from me because he knew I'd be mad. Another red flag to me. So fast forward to March. For my daughter's first birthday, so I invited him and his, his daughter, of course, and Sarah was giving... I invited him, I invited Quincy and his daughter, of course, to my daughter's birthday party. Quincy's do, um, child's mother, Sarah, was giving Quincy extremely hard time about getting the baby that Saturday. So eventually... She said Quincy could get the baby, but he had to bring her back home in 20 minutes. Crazy, right? So he did. He, was, he did as he was told out of fear of not being able to get the baby again. But before she left, I got some pics of the baby at the party. So later that night, I was talking to Quincy about everything, and I told him about the nice pictures I got of his daughter. He stressed to me that he did not want the pictures on Facebook. Me and Sarah and him went to high school together, so we are Facebook friends. But I deleted Quincy one day when I was upset about something stupid and I never added him back. So that was the final red flag. I was pissed. I broke up with him and accused him of still messing with Sarah and that he was still in love with her. The next day I was even more upset. I posted the picture of me and his daughter at the birthday party along with other pictures and I wrote Sarah on Facebook to find out what the fuck was going on. I told her I needed clarification on things. Quincy was telling me about her. So she told me to call her and gave me her number. I asked about the aquarium and the party. Come to find out, she confirmed the aquarium story saying it, was, it wasn't anything like that at all. It was just him offering to do something nice. But then she went in on Quincy. She said he's a terrible father, he doesn't do shit, and he's broke, and he doesn't pay his child support. All lies. I know for a fact he pays child support and he tries to buy the baby things, but he has stopped buying her things because she 
has been throwing the shit away. I couldn't figure out why she lied so bad. Do you know she started bawling crying to me on the phone? She said she didn't want the baby at the party. She didn't want their daughter at the party because her daughter kept getting sick and she didn't want her to get sick again. So she was already pissed that he took, Quincy took her anyway to my daughter's party. She told me how much he hates him. I usually don't try and judge people off of what others say, but Quincy told me that his baby mom was a little crazy and I didn't realize it until this moment. So she thanked me for telling her and said she wouldn't tell Quincy that her and I talked because Quincy is crazy and he would try and hurt me. Not true. So two weeks later, Sarah calls Child Protective Services on Quincy, lying saying he took the baby to a party where everyone was smoking weed. She was referring to my daughter's birthday party. And he leaves the baby pissy and shitty and he doesn't change her or feed her when he has her. She completely lied, April. And not only that, she hasn't let him see his daughter since the beginning of March. Now we're in July and then there's this huge custody battle over the baby and I feel completely responsible. I can't help but feel guilty about the compulsive actions. And I know if he finds out I spoke with her, he will be so furious he'll never speak to me again. Quincy is a huge part of my daughter's life as he's been around her since she was six months. But I feel so guilty watching him spend time with my baby knowing I'm responsible for him not being able to see his daughter. Should I tell him or should I just let sleeping dogs lie? Please help. Since then, me and Quincy have been back together, but I hate to see him feeling so depressed about his situation. So, okay. Hmm. So, Cody. So, Cody has a relationship with Quincy, basically. Cody has a daughter who is 16 months now, and Quincy has a daughter who's probably about two and a half months, two and a half years old by now, and Quincy got a daughter's mother, Sarah, who's dramatizer. She's a dramatizer. So, basically, uh, Cody calls up Sarah, Quincy's baby mom, because she wanted to know the real truth. What's the real deal? I need to get some clarification on y'all's situation. Are you in love with him? Are y'all together? Because he doesn't want you to know about me. So, long story short, she had a phone conversation with Quincy's baby mother on the phone. Not really sure what the whole entire conversation was, but it broke down to... Quincy's baby mother hates him. He's broke. He's a liar. He don't do shit. And now child protection is in the picture on Quincy's ass because his baby mom's then called child protection and says he don't feed the baby when he has her. He don't change her pissy and shitty diaper. And he don't do shit. So for some reason, Cody is feeling responsible. She feels like this played a part on her behalf because she gave Sarah a call and asked her questions about Quincy and Sarah's relationship. So he hasn't been able to be around his daughter since then. So should you allow sleeping dogs to lie or should you just tell him? Well, Cody, my personal um, my personal advice, what I would do is I would tell him. I would have been told him, though, the day that I spoke to her, I would have told him then. You know, I spoke to your baby mother. We had a nice conversation or we didn't have a nice conversation. We had a conversation. Me and your, mother, your baby mother had a long conversation and there are some things that I'm concerned about that she's referring to you as. You don't really have to nitpick and say everything because you don't want any type of friction between him and his baby mother. So basically I would have just said, you know, listen, I spoke with your daughter's mother today because I was just concerned about you and I's relationship, how our relationship is going because I'm feeling like a certain type of way and I feel like you're hiding me because you're still with her or you're still in love with her. So I did need some clarification and in the midst of me and her talking, she did kindly get upset said about certain things about you which I feel is untrue you know I would have broke it down to him like that I wouldn't have kept it from him but on the same token you can't blame yourself for the way his baby mother reacts um he did tell you she was crazy beforehand and this is one thing um I'm gonna say Everybody, when guys talk about their ex-girlfriends, their baby mothers, it always seems like they always say, oh, she crazy, she crazy, that's why I ain't with her. That bitch is crazy, something wrong with her, that bitch is crazy. They always seem to say these things about us, and I say this because um, I'm pretty sure it was said about me too, and I, I'll be the first one to let you know, I'm not crazy. But I am very upfront. That is me. I'm not crazy. I'm upfront. And maybe that's not what you like about me. Is that I have no filter and I say exactly how I feel. So when you're a baby father telling his new girlfriend, oh yeah, she crazy. It's sad that the baby, the new girlfriend believes everything that's coming out of the 
dude's mouth because this is just a way to get in good with you. When he's telling you, yeah, my baby mother is crazy, or et cetera, et cetera, well, if she's so fucking crazy, what you with her for? What was you with her for? Why did you have a baby with her? That makes you just as crazy as that bitch. Like, seriously, she then you just as crazy. When they say things like that, like, oh, she's crazy, or oh, something is wrong, my baby mother, and stuff, Unfortunately, a lot of women fall for that because they feel like, oh, dude's telling me the entire truth. Yeah, she's crazy. This is what he says. You really can't believe everything that Quincy is telling you, Cody, because, yeah, you may see a little bit of a crazy, or not even crazy, but a rambunctious attitude, or just, a, you may see a little bit of what you may want to feel he's saying is true by speaking with her, but everybody has their own side to a story so what he's telling you about her she has her own side and her own version to a story so he's telling you she's crazy she's telling you he's crazy so they're both coming at you telling you that each one of the other is crazy you've known her from school you've been friends with her on facebook yeah, he might feel she's crazy towards him because of the shit that they went through together. But you don't see her out in society acting like a fool, acting like a lunatic or anything. So when a dude or man comes to you and says, yeah, my ex-wife or my kid's mother, she crazy, that's why I'm not with her. Trust and believe that's just one thing to get in good with you. That bitch is probably not really even crazy. And if she is, nigga, you made her that way, okay? For whatever feelings you have or an animosity you have or bitterness you have towards your ex, is because of something that you have probably done to her. And if I act crazy to your ass, it's I act crazy to you and not the rest of the society. So don't feel bad. She balling on the phone with you for a reason. It doesn't have anything to do with her being crazy. What goes on between them two or what has gone on between them two, I guarantee you 100% that you do not know the full story to everything. You don't know the truth. You know his version. There's his version, there's her version, and there's somebody else's version too, okay? So there's always, they say there's two sides to the story. I guarantee you there's more than two sides to everybody's story because other people know other people's business and they can tell you the exact truth or they can tell you more information than that person person or that person wants you to know so I wouldn't feel like she's crazy and you know what he's telling you that she he can't see his daughter and she's bringing child protection custody on on him some things are done for reasons some things are done out of spite don't feel upset don't feel like you've caused any type of friction between their co-parenting because you spoke with her I'm guaranteeing you that this was already probably brewing inside of Sarah as it was you know what I mean? So your conversation might have sparked somewhat something in her calling child protection, but I guarantee you that what you spoke with her about did not make you guys feel like, okay, this is child protection time. I'm going to call make her feel like that. Now, as far as the part where she called child protection and said that people were at your birthday party smoking weed, can I ask you something, Cody? How do you really know she said that? Do you have the child protection papers, the court papers? Did uh, Quincy bring the court papers over to you and tell you this? Or are you just going off of hearsay? Are you going off of what Quincy said to you? Because sometimes men and sometimes women tell us stories to make us feel bad for them, have pity on them. You know what I'm saying? Boo-hoo them. Oh, woe is me them. Little violin them. Okay? That is what a lot of people do. So if you don't have any proof because the proof is in the pudding, then you really can't say that she went ahead to child protection and said that there was marijuana and people were smoking weed at your party. Now, for one, the baby was there for 20 minutes. He only let her go there for... She only was allowed the baby with Quincy for 20 minutes. To your daughter's birthday party so let's see how this works out this is what Quincy told you that his baby mother Sarah is only going to allow him to take his daughter for 20 minutes to a birthday party well what happened to travel time there and back okay by that time 20 minutes has gone so what did he get like two minutes in the party that portion of the story the whole 20 minutes thing I really don't believe did Quincy come back to the birthday party after he brought his daughter back or did he just not return and it seems like from your story that Quincy did not come back to the birthday party because you told you spoke to him the next day and informed him that you got some really nice pictures of his daughter at your daughter's birthday party. 
So maybe he had other intentions. Maybe he had other things on his agenda that birthday party. And that's the reason why he didn't stay. Because she did tell you that the little girl was sick and she didn't want to go back outside. Now, I will tell you this. I would just watch myself real quick, uh, real good. Um, you don't want to be calling up the exes. And it's not that you're stirring up trouble. But here's the thing. you got to take it like a grain of salt. He's telling you one and she's telling you the other. Where's the medium? There's somebody in the middle and it's not you. She wants you to know what she wants you to know. And he only wants you to know what he only wants you to know. He's not going to give you the full side of the story about their entire relationship and why they're not together and why they can't communicate and why this is happening and why that is happening. He's not going to want to do that because that's his past. And if everyone let out their entire past relationship business to the new person in their life, you guys probably wouldn't have a relationship. None of us would probably be in a relationship right now if you was to tell the person, yeah, I fucked this one and that one and this one, and that's why we're not together and I'm a hoe. And you really think the new person is going to want to sit around for that? Hell no. So he has his own little closet, his own little skeletons, and they all in the closet, and he's guaranteedly not telling you everything that him and Sarah has went through. And maybe Sarah is not telling you everything, and maybe she's telling you more than he has, okay? The broke part, the child support part. What I want to know, Cody, is how do you know he's paying child support? You said you know this. Are you there with him while he cashes those checks or deposits the money for child support? Or do you see his paycheck and his wages are being garnished? Which one is it? Are you there when he buys things for his daughter and you and you take she takes it, he takes it over to the home? So if you're not there to witness all of these things, then you really can't say. But don't feel like you're the bad guy because you spoke with his child's mother. Don't feel that way. And should you tell him? I definitely would tell him. Because why be a liar? He might be a liar. You don't know that he's lying about anything. But don't you sit around and feel like you got to keep a secret, which is not so bad of a secret. You spoke to his baby mother. So what? You guys don't got no beef with each other. It ain't even like that. So be honest and let her know, or let him know rather, that you spoke to her. But don't go being chum chum with his baby mother because it's not the best friend thing with his baby mother. You spoke with her, leave it at that. Wish him well and give him as much support as he needs for this custody battle. But listen... Take it as a grain of salt and don't fall for everything that he tells you. And definitely don't fall for everything she tells you. Because everybody has their own versions of a story. And then like I said, there's the medium person who needs to be in the middle to tell you the real deal or somewhat of the real deal. So, yes you guys, let Cody know what you would do or what you feel is right in this situation. So moving on to the next. Okay. All right. Hmm. Hey, y'all. Uh, I'm in real. I am in really. I am in real need of your hard hitting advice. So here goes. Call me Kate. Recently, I got into my first serious relationship with John, who is seven years my senior, and I am 19. He is 26. John is really good to me. Very respectful and t and protective. I lost my virginity, to John, as sex is something I view with value, which he admired about me. However, now that I am in my first sexual relationship, I, of course, am really into it as it's the first person I've ever fully trusted, and I want to have sex, sex often. John was the same at the beginning, and we got physical multiple times a day. However, as recent, John has very much lost interest. He works the same hours as me, but claims he is always too tired or jokes that I've worn him out, and that he just wants to lay with me and watch things on TV or text his friends. I understand that he is older, so the whole sex thing isn't as new and exciting for him. But it still hurts that after only six months, he has lost interest in my sexuality, in, in me sexually, and that he doesn't want to connect with me on that level. Sex is an integral component of any romantic relationship, and I don't feel like it's fair on me. Is he still really good to me? But I can't shift the feeling of being unwanted. What should I do? Thank you. Your videos are golden. Mmm. So, Kate and John, so they are seven years apart. He's 26 and she's 19. First of all, Kate, could you have picked another name for, for your boyfriend? John is like the worst name in the world to me right now. Though my father's name is John, but my ex-husband's name is that too, and I cannot stand him. So... <laughs> Oh, 
I cannot stand that name anymore at all. But anyway, so you're seven, you're 19 and he's 26. And you're saying he don't want to have sex no more. First of all, he's not old. 26 is not old. 26-year-old men love to have sex, okay? I'm not really sure we got that from because he's old. He's not old. He is in his prime girlfriend, all right? So let's get that straight. I'm 41 and my boo is 42. He likes to have sex all the time, okay? So we... Ain't got nothing. I, for one, be like, listen, I'm tired. I want to go lay down. Please stop. No, not today. Well, we just did it yesterday or two days, three days ago. God, you got to really be like that? Sheesh. Now all he want to do is cuddle and lay with you and text his friends. Okay, first of all, who, how do you know those are his friends that he's texting, Kate? Is John telling you those are his friends? Because if John's telling you that, then John is telling you that the sky is golden and you're going to believe that shit. And that there's gold and, and a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And you're going to believe that shit too, right? And then he just wants to lay with you because he's tired and you wore him out. Yeah, been there, done that, hurt, all that shit before too. No nigga gets worn out. They like to have sex. He's 26 years old. Horny young boy is what my mom used to call them. They are horny, horny Horny, and that's what they like to do. They love to have sex. So, um, wore him out. Hmm. This does he disappear on you at times? Let me tell you something. Now, yeah, sex is a great thing. Love it. Um, I'm not saying that I'm a nympho and I want to have it all the time. I could do without it. If I just got some last night, we can go to sleep the next day because my ass is older. I'm 41 years old. Um, it might be a little bit different now because I'm not with my ex-husband. So when I did um, sleep with him, it was like whenever I felt like it, which was not very often, okay? And that's just because I was not turned on by his ass, okay? But from what I'm sensing, if you're not with him every day, all the time, then he may have someone else on the side. And that bitch might have wore his ass out, okay? Not you, but him. She might have wore him out. Now, you say he works the same hours as you. You didn't say he worked the same job, though, either. So, I'm trying to give John the benefit of the doubt. Though I hate the name and I really don't want to. But I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Is his job more um, stressful? More he, Is he more hands-on in his job than you are? Because if you're just sitting at a job all day and not doing shit, but this man is out on his feet, he's moving around, he's doing shit, he's picking shit up, I would be tired too and wouldn't want to have sex. I would want to go to sleep. That's what I would want to do. I would be tired and worn out, but he's using the excuse as you wore him out. So, seems like to me that old dude, because he's not old, but he's older than you, may have you in a mental state of mind to where you've fallen in love, head over heels for this man, and now he's got you whipped because now you're loving the sex and he's got you where he wants you to be nobody said you got to marry his ass nobody said for you to go out and sleep with everybody in the world you don't even have to use him to fulfill your sexual needs okay don't rely on him or a man for everything and this is where some women go wrong you got to rely on yourself to fulfill yourself and happiness regardless of what it is down there up here wherever you have to take care of your own self first your own needs your own wants your own anything because if you rely on this man and he knows that you rely on him for that he gonna shit on you sometimes and that's what happens so i don't depend on any man i don't depend on any person i depend on myself because i know i'm gonna get the job done regardless and whatever i say i'm gonna do i'm gonna do if i say i'm gonna pay this bill i'm gonna pay this bill so with that being said First of all, he's text. he likes to text his friends. I don't think he likes to text his friends. Just my personal um, feelings toward this, I think he likes to text the next bitch. And she's wearing his ass out, okay? Men don't go back and forth texting each other like that as much as women do. And I'm not trying to stereotype shit, but we as women ha like to talk on the phone more than men like to talk on the phone. We like to text and shit. We like to text more. If we're texting... The man is constantly texting. They're, they're texting their girl. It's like with me and my man, we text each other. Sometimes when he's on his break at work. Or he'll just call me. He'll just call me. Um, or if I don't want to talk to him, I really don't like to feel like I want to talk. We'll text. Um, and he texts me a lot. Um, yeah, so we text a lot. But we more or less talk on the phone a lot though too. So, when a dude is texting a lot, it seems like to me that they're texting another female because that's what they like to do and that's what they do. So, if I were you, I'm not saying be sneaky and go through his shit, 
but just keep an eye out on him just keep an eye out on him and as far as you wearing him out girl wear your own stuff out fuck that man okay if y'all not living together and you need some sexual needs i'm not saying go out there and find the next man but don't put all your eggs in one basket on someone that you really don't know is there for you 100 percent if you feel like you're not content with him and you feel like he's not turned on by you sexually anymore then what you need to do is get yourself together sister and plan your future for one you're 19 he's 26 years old what, you might be one thing to him and he might be one thing to you, meaning you might just be that pussy that he just need whenever he need it or want it around because he feel like he can mold you, you know what I'm saying, and mold you into the person he wants you to be because you're still young. You're younger than him, okay? Now, as far as the sexual part of fulfilling your needs and stuff, they have toys out there, okay? They have toys. First of all, you started liking sex, but you started liking sex with him. So you really haven't experienced anything. These little fingers can do miracles for you and can really work, okay? Start experiencing your own stuff. I'm not saying be a pervert, but take care of your own needs. Just like I said, don't rely on anybody to take care of any type of needs that you may have. You got to take care of yourself sometimes, okay? But I wouldn't say that you're not turning him on. It's just this situation, Kate. Okay? Somebody else might be turning him on as well, and someone else might be wearing him out. That's why his fingers stay on the phone, text messaging, and text messaging, and text messaging. Because he's probably texting the next female. So that's my hard-hitting advice. And as far as sex, yeah, it is an important part of a relationship, but it really isn't, okay? Yeah, we do need sex. You're not going to die without it, okay? You're not going to die without it. And we would like to have it because it does, you know, make you feel all warm and cuddly. And all he wants to do with you is lay. When has a man really wanted to lay with a woman and not do anything unless they already done did something with somebody else, okay? Or that he's really, really tired. But at that age, they don't really get really, really tired like that unless they already got some pussy. And he's good for the night or he's good. You know what I'm saying? He's good. So, girlfriend, please. Stop being naive. Wake up because the friend that he's texting is probably a female friend, which is a female girlfriend or a female piece of extra pussy that he got on the side that he is getting worn out by. Just take my advice and watch out for it. Don't throw all your eggs in one basket and feel like, oh, okay, he's the one. Oh, sexually, he's the one. Because that's the first piece of dick your ass had. I guarantee you, you're going to have another piece and another piece after that. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to find another piece of dick that's way worth it. Trust me on that one. Yeah, that was the first piece. How am I supposed to know what it really feels like? He made it feel good because that was the first time I ever did it. But then the next motherfucker come around that you de de dealing with because you, you broke up with him. And you like, God damn surfboard okay surfboard yes I'm just saying I'm, I'm just saying so anyway tell Kate what you think about John oh I hate that name John mm. so I have nine minutes left and I really want to get to the third one and I'm going to try my best rambling on so much oh my god okay Okay, so this one is really short. Hey girl, I love your Real Talk series and I thought I would give it a shot. I've been watching you for years and I admire your ambition. We got a lot in common. Anyway, I've been with my husband for 16 years and been married for 9. First, let me say he's not a bad person, but we've been through a lot of crap in the beginning of the relationship, which is expected and was, both, was on both ends. Shaking my head. Laugh out loud. But I can say a few years before we got married, he's been nothing but drama free. The problem is I've always been a person that spoiled the whole household circle, etc. My kids, husband, people I care about in general. I've always worked and been a lucky person when it comes to money falling in my lap. lap. So it's nothing for me to treat people good. I love to see people smile. I can't even get excited about gifts because I know it's from my money pot. My kids are gone and grown. As of this year, the youngest is gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And laugh out loud. I feel like I'm not happy at times because it seems he got comfortable, my husband got comfortable, and I'm the one that always made stuff happen. I have no regrets on anything I've done finance-wise, but now I'm not getting any younger. I want more. I'm not sexually turned on 
and he bitches about it, of course. We do have sex, but maybe once a month. I think the years of taking care of everything has finally got to me. Turn me off. Don't get me wrong. He has worked, but it always seemed like I still had to cover the bases because child support always took most of that from him. I want to be happy so bad. He always has been there for my kids that I've never had to lift a finger when it came to the house. But his work ethic is shot. I'm scared our marriage won't survive, and he's easy to and he's not easy to talk to. He gets so defensive so damn fast. I know I can do better and deserve better. Please give me some advice. Hmm. We're going to call her Shawnee. Wow. So, Shawnee, you sound somewhat like my shit. Um, been, was married 11 years. Been with him for 16. Okay. Um, he had kids. I'm the one that was always paying for mostly everything. 80% of the bills. And you know what? You, did, you are turned off. Okay. Because I started not having sex with my ex-husband. I had him sleeping on the couch for two and a half years when he came out of prison. I didn't want him nowhere near me. I didn't want him sleeping in the bedroom with me. I didn't want him spooning me, cuddling me, loving up on me. I did not want any of that stuff from him because I actually got turned off. When a woman has to constantly take care of everything, buy shit, pay the bills, take care of the household, cook, clean, do all of this shit, we get tired. We get tired and we get turned off because, for one, I'm not your goddamn maid. I'm not your goddamn slave. I'm taking care of the kids. I'm taking care of you. I'm taking care of your sexual needs. That shit is like, you know what? Why are you even here? I'm taking care of all this stuff. Why are you here? I could just find someone else so I can please myself. Okay? And this is how I felt. I was so turned off by my ex-husband. I would have sex with him maybe once or twice a month. And he would bitch about it and say stuff about it. And you know how I would always get my stuff out of the mood or get away from him having sex with me because he would try to turn me on. Oh, here goes Mumsy. She, oh, Mumsy, you're not feeling well? Okay, I'm coming to bed. And I would have Mumsy sleep with me. You know, I would do things like that. Like, oh, well, she, as soon as she would peek down and stuff, oh, I got to go put Mumsy to bed or something like that. Oh, I'm not feeling well. I, I, I got a headache. Shit like that is what I would do because I just was not turned on by him anymore. And honestly, I'm going to tell you, the only way that I could get turned on with him is when I would sit there and get high. I would smoke some weed so that way I would feel like, okay, let me, now I can get somewhat turned on. I'm horny. I'm not even turned on. I'm horny. So now I'm going to sleep with him. But it would be like once a week or not even once a week, twice a month, things like that. It, it was like, it felt like it was a duty. It was like a job. I didn't feel into it. I'd lay there and roll my eyes at the top of my head like, oh God, when is he going to be done? Can he hurry up and fucking finish and get off? Because I really don't feel like being bothered with him. So you're tired. You're tired of him and you're done. You are turned off by all the shit you had to do. You are the man and the woman of the household and you are taking care of everything. So I get that because I've been there and I felt the same exact way as you feel. You know, it's okay to be that way in the beginning. Like, it's okay. When I say it's okay to be that way in the beginning, meaning, oh, we're good. We're buying everything for everyone like I was doing. And, you know, and we're not really feeling it for after some time. And when I say some time, meaning some years and years and years down the road. And it really starts to take a toll on you. And then it's like, why the fuck are you here? Um, what is the reason for you? Why do I need you around in my life? You're not doing anything but causing me stress. I'm not turned on by you sexually. And when it comes to that, then that means you're not turned on by him mentally. So, Shawnee, you are turned off. And it starts, like, you know, by little things. And when you feel like you can't have sex with a person and they're not turning you on anymore, it's because you're done and you're tired. And they're not there for you. And you're not there for them. You're there, but mentally you're not really there for them. And it's sad that it ends up like that and it turns out to be like that because I really never thought it would be like that with me and my ex-husband. But it actually turned out to be that way. Like, I never felt like I would never not want to have sex with him, but it turned out to be that way. Like, I was not attracted to him anymore. It was the bullshit. He was defensive. And I was constantly paying for shit and doing stuff all the time and busting my ass. And it was like, his worth ethics was bullshit too because, you know, he was a felon. It was just all kind of shit, and I was tired, and I was tired of it. And eventually, the sex started diminishing, and eventually, it was just like, Ugh. you know, I didn't find him to be unattractive, as in physically, like his looks, but I just was not attracted to him as a person anymore. 
And as sexually, as a sexual being, I did not want to have sex with him either because I was tired and I was turned off. So unfortunately, that is what happens when your relationship starts to diminish. And of course, you want to save your marriage and maybe you guys should go to counseling and talk about things. If you feel like you can't talk to him personally, maybe you guys should do counseling. It may work for you. It does not work for everyone, but it may work for you. You can't give up sometimes just like that. Give it a try before you give up. Just don't walk away from something that you've had for so long. I'm not going to say I walked away because I didn't. I've tried and I tried and I tried. I went to counseling. I've done many things. And I went and put him in. Like he went to rehab for, uh, like not even rehab, but you know he stopped drinking and he went back and he went back. And it, you know, it just got worse. So I tried and I tried and I never walked away and I never gave up. But you know, the last, the last portion of my marriage was like, I was done. I was totally turned off by him and there was no saving it. So I would say give it a try, but just know where I'm coming from. I know how you feel and it's because you're done and you're tired and you've done enough. And after a while that puts a wear and tear and a strain on us and as a person, as a female, we can get turned off really quick. So give Shawnee your advice and let her, these ladies know how you feel and if like I said you want a video, post me an email and I'll be more than happy to get back to you. And on that note. Stay diva and divolicious. And I'll be back real soon with some more videos. So, as always, I love you guys. And make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Thumbs this real talk up. Share it with your friends on social media and so forth. Make sure you check out my other videos. All the information will be posted for you guys below. And I'll talk to you in my next video.